All right, everybody, welcome to Tubpreneurs. It is a beautiful day today, doing the podcast a little bit earlier in the heat of the sun in a major way, but got the tub nice and cool, so it's great. My guest this week is Nick Bittinger with Bittinger Asphalt Management and also Nick Bittinger Coaching. Nick, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Good, John. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm glad. I know it, it took us a little bit to figure this one out with dealing with sickness and some of the other stuff that comes in. But uh, we're here. We're, we're here. in the tub. We're in the tub and it feels nice. So I appreciate you yes. dropping the temp a little bit. <laughs> is it safe to say this is your first podcast from the hot tub? Or It is my first podcast in the know. hot tub. I like it, it is. I like it. I always, uh, that's my goal with this is to be the first podcast that yeah. anybody ever does in the hot tub. Yeah. It's so, the first one I've heard about being in a hot tub. So you're. You're doing something. We're winning. We're winning. I love it. I love it. We got something unique going on yeah, here. Yeah, man. Well, Nick's going to uh, really talk a lot about how to set up systems, how he got started building Bittinger, or Bittinger, Bittinger uh, yep. asphalt management, and growing it from kind of the ground up to now, I mean, you don't really do a whole lot with it, do you? No. It's kind of um, on autopilot. It is a little bit. I mean, I, it, I'm still, you know, I'm still in the day-to-day, -day, uh, obviously, just because you know, it is me, it is structured differently and we can get into that. But, uh, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been nice. It's been nice structuring it the way that I did. So, well, let's, let's go back to the beginning. Um, how, how did you get started in this company and, and what kind of brought Bittinger, uh, Bittinger asphalt management around? So, um, yeah, long story, uh, try and trim it up for you, but I started out in the asphalt industry because, my dad started a company called Great Lakes Striping and Sealing. Okay. Um, that was a very, I mean, we were well known in the in the northern Michigan mm -hmm. portion of the state, um, going anywhere from the bridge down to Lansing, you know, as far as work goes. But, uh, you know, uh, dad came down with some health issues. Uh, myself and my, my brother took over his business. You know, just I'm skimming over the top here. And then uh, we actually... Uh, merged our company with Molon, uh, okay. another company in town. They were diversifying into and getting into uh, asphalt as well. So we merged with them, and then uh, I went to go work for them for a little bit, and then uh, decided, you know, I I kind of was more meant to do things on my own. So went off on my own again. So Bittinger Asphalt has only been established uh, for a little over a year now. Really? Okay. Yeah. So. <clears throat> um, but being in the industry itself for over 20 years has given me, a, uh, obviously, I built a lot of relationships and yeah. gained a lot of trust. And that's why getting, uh, you know, forming Binninger Asphalt Management or the acronym BAM. So if I, if I <laughs> refer to BAM, that's what I'm talking about. I love it. But forming BAM, um, using my last name in there was very important because just to, because of the name that, you know, my dad had kind of built up too. So the trust he'd built. So I kind of piggybacked off that as well. So so you're talking about starting this a year ago and, and really coming out of this crazy pandemic, government shutdowns, a lot of businesses going out of business. Mm -hmm. And obviously there was a lot of opportunity <clears throat> in that time. There was. For people who wanted to really push and strive. So what was that like as you were kind of making that commitment to say, well, you know, I'm coming out of the craziness, but I'm going to go ahead and start something new. I mean, is in my mind, asphalt is always going to be around, you know, and sure, um, that might be kind of a luxury item for some people going through financial uh, stress in their life or, or you know, um, financial struggles. But, you know, asphalt is there and it needs to be maintained. It needs to be fixed. And, um, you know, it really wasn't wasn't bad at all. I mean, it, it actually allowed me. So I had a daughter about two, two years and three, four months ago, and it allowed me the freedom to kind of be with, with the family a little bit more after she was born and, um, you know, really uh, just kind of leverage the time that I had at home to kind of build out this, this business. And so it, it actually worked in my favor, I mean, if, if I'm being honest. So, yeah, it, it really was, uh, wasn't bad. I mean, people were still looking for for asphalt work and stuff like that. So it really, I mean, it really was not bad at all. Now, as you've grown over the last year, um, 
how 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 big are you guys now? I mean, how many employees do you have? Do you have a leadership team in place? What do you have right now? Yeah, so this is the fun part. Um, so Bittinger Asphalt Management, the way, and I'll kind of I'll, I'll kind of uh, dive into this just to explain the why it's structured the way it is. So Bittinger Asphalt Management is set up as a management style company. Um, it is just me and me only. I have no employees, no uh, overhead other than my, you know, my office and whatnot. Uh, no equipment. And the way that I did that, my whole idea and strategy behind forming it like that was because, you know, being in the trades, being in the asphalt industry for so long. And then um, a couple of years ago, I got into business coaching, and so that really gave me a more of a, a dissected you know, viewpoint on the struggles of the trade of a tradesman, right? Yep. People in the trades. A lot of it had to do with communication. A lot of guys are owner operators. A lot of guys start these businesses, trades businesses, because quite frankly, they're good at swinging a hammer and they, they think that they, you know, it's going to buy them freedom. And, you know, sometimes if you do it the right way, it does. But a lot of these guys are, you know, doing the day to day. They're basically creating a job for themselves. Right. So um, the communication kind of falls off the wayside, you know, and the systems and the processes and all that. So um, I had that knowledge going into starting Bittinger Asphalt Management and then also just being in this area. Traverse City is a very unique area. There's, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely filled with a lot of people um, who, you know, like to be treated well, who like, uh, you know, they gain your trust. They're going to be customers forever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I, I'll, I guess for the lack of better terms, I'll say clicky, but I mean that in the most... <laughs> you know, genuine way possible. Um, so, uh, yeah, just having that exposure in the coaching and the business coaching, and then just kind of seeing how all these other, you know, trades, businesses, and, you know, being in the asphalt world kind of operated, it was, I kind of wanted to come in and bridge that gap. So what I primarily do is I, I do the footwork for my customers or potential customers, you know, instead of, going around and calling uh, three or four, two companies to have bids, uh, you know, provide you with bids. I have very close relationships with trusted subcontractors that I sub all my work out to that um, really the footwork is done by me. So I, I put all my subs through, you know, a, a qualification process so they can go out and represent my brand efficiently and effectively in a trusted way and um you know that's that's kind of so that's that's who bidding your asphalt is i guess and you know a lot of people are like well that sounds like people are just paying extra that's false um so the the whole negotiations and the pricing i'm able to stay competitive within the market because my negotiations are with the subcontractors so you know, if I feed these guys work, obviously f these companies who are trusted and and can represent my brand, they not only uh, offer me a you know a discounted rate so I can stay competitive, but it also allows me. Um, they give me a little bit uh, more. I should say this lightly. Uh, a, a little bit more. Um, what's the word I want to use here? they'll push me ahead of some of their schedule. So okay. um, just because of... of well, maybe the, a little more priority. Yeah, schedule. more priority. That's the word I was looking for. So uh, not that they push all their stuff out of the way, but, um, you know, it, it definitely, uh, you know, if I'm feeding them work, it definitely comes, it, it comes, for, you know, it, it comes with a price. So they're able to kind of push my stuff or group my stuff together with their stuff. So the timing of me getting jobs completed is also, you know, that's something I take a lot of pride in as well because a lot of people, you know, struggle with scheduling and all that stuff and are just backed up. So long story short, um, yeah, I just wanted to really, can, I was tired of being in the industry and hearing people's uh, horror stories of hiring the wrong company. And so I wanted to come in and bridge that gap, be the communication for my customer base and manage these jobs from start to finish. And, you know, obviously I couldn't do that without being competitive in, in the industry. So, right. um, you know, I always say like, I'm, I, 
asphalt isn't my passion. People are my passion. So <laughs> I really wanted to provide, um, in, you know, just an A plus exponential service to my customer base. And I really felt as though, you know, I couldn't do that with having employees and all these other, you know, stressors. I just wanted to have the main focus be on my customer base and providing them with, with a trusted, uh, you know, contractor to be on their job site. So, so you're, you're essentially becoming the middleman. And and it's so funny. I hear this a lot with, with business is there there's so much money to be made as the middleman because you're just building the relationships, right? You become a relationship builder with the customer. And as Nick just talked about, you become a, a relationship builder with other businesses. And finding a way to monetize that middle ground is not only a great way to do business, but it actually can be something where you're creating win-win opportunities for, as you mentioned, the businesses, the, the subcontractors that you use, they're giving you priority because they know mm-hmm. Nick's going to bring me the work. Right. And the people know that Nick's going to go out and find good, trustworthy people mm-hmm. to come and do the work. That's right. So as you started off on this, what was some of your biggest challenges when you took that leap to, from employed to self-employed? Um, well, I've, I've, you know, like I touched on before, John, I, I took over my dad's company with my brother and, you know, I, so I had, I had exposure in the hot seat for about seven years, you know, running a multi-million dollar small business before I started bidding her asphalt. So the challenge is I kind of, I guess, had a head start on that. Mm-hmm. Um, but the challenges were, were more in the area of getting people to kind of see my vision and understand that, hey, this isn't, you know, an added service. Like you're hiring, you know, a company who's going to do the footwork and, um, you know, my prices are competitive just like everyone else's. Like there there have been a few people that have been turned off by the fact that I'm not doing the work um, just because maybe they're not used to that type of structure, but it's not new. Like, it's just like a GC, you know, I mean, I'm a GC in the asphalt industry. So, um, as far as, you know, the, the struggles, um, mainly lied in just the, just communicating, uh, that to people and having them not lose trust in the fact that, Hey, I'm just out here bidding your job. And then I'm going to, you know, hand the work off to someone else. It's a lot more than that. So, um, you know, being year one in it's, it's been a lot of, just gaining people's trust and, you know, obviously providing, like I said, just that, that A plus exponential service, um, that, uh, is going to eventually, like I said, gain trust and get people to know who Bittinger Asphalt is like Bittinger Asphalt and, uh, trust us. So that was the main struggle. So as you're going through all this and you're, you're starting to build these relationships and you're, you're trying to fill a gap of communication and, and I know from being somebody who, you know, I was in the service industry for five years and the majority of my customers that I work with now in my business coaching are service industry. And I've seen firsthand how hard it is to run a successful company and communicate at the same time. Mm-hmm. So what are some of the, the ways that you've set up systems and started to kind of bridge that gap within your company that would make people go, oh, this is why I want to go with been in your asphalt management versus going directly with the company. Really, it's 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 not rocket science at all, and I know you understand this too. But um, it is, you know, obviously, like you said, setting up the right systems and processes in place. But um, one of the biggest thing, John, is communication and uh, speed of you know your your follow up or you know your follow up process or the speed of getting back to people. Um, people just want to feel important. They want to feel like their top priority. They want to feel like they, they matter Mm -hmm. and they don't want to feel just like any employee in a business. They don't want to feel like just another number, you know? So it's, it's been a a matter of helping these, these people who call us, um, feel important. And that's done just by getting back to these people and providing quotes in a very timely fashion, because, Um, that's been the main strategy that I've been using because a lot of these guys are, they'll call anyone and they're just, they're two, three, maybe a month out. So people want to feel like, you know, if someone's a month out, sure, that could be a good thing to some people, meaning that they have a trusted brand, they're busy, they do good work. You know, a lot of people like them, they're, you know, they're so on and so forth. 
but um, they also, you know, it also could be a bad thing where it's like, these guys are so busy. Are they even going to get me done this year? Or, you know, so it's just a matter of uh, the speed of returning calls, getting back to people, providing estimates for these for these potential customers. Um, as far as like systems, I mean, just the simple fact of having a CRM and something to kind of keep hold the data of, you know, these client relations and um, keep everything organized. And, you know, th there can be some autonomy set up, obviously, with CRMs. And um, sometimes it, it could be a matter of checking out a couple CRMs that work best with your company. And, and I do suggest that. But that's really I mean, that's that's all that we've really done to, to kind of bridge that gap. So it's just all in communication. So and you're, you're talking about CRM, obviously, customer resource manager um, or management. I, I actually don't know what the that's essentially what it does, yep. though, um, and and how that can help out with everything. The other thing that I, I love that you said is that speed of communication and and to entrepreneurs, this is something so important to small business and business in general <clears throat> is the ability in which a person can get another human being on the phone and get their question answered. So as you think about your customer base. When they call you, how quickly, how quick is it until they talk to a real live human person? And can that real live human person do something for them? So, cause that's, that's another hiccup I've seen. I've got a great example. The other day, uh, I was giving a gentleman a ride out to Petoskey. And as we were driving out there, he was trying to call uh, a hotel. I'm not gonna say which one, but he was trying to get a hold of this hotel to change a reservation. And the first attempt, he was on hold for 15 minutes, and then it just hung up. And then the second attempt, another 15 minutes, talked to the lady, and then it was another 10 minutes until he got an answer. Uh, and it was just kind of this, and, and at the end of the day, like, listening to the other end of that phone call, I was like, well, I don't even know if that lady really had the power to do what he was asking to do, which was a pretty simple thing. Yeah. So empowering your people, but also having that speed of communication. Yep, absolutely. So over the last year, obviously you're in a great spot with not having to worry about employees because a lot of businesses have been struggling. How, how did you kind of pitch that to the, the businesses, the relationships that you went uh, after as well and saying, hey, this is what I want to do and this is how I expect to get paid? Mm-hmm. Um, well, it, it really, it, it's not, it, I, I guess there wasn't really a, a big struggle in that as well. Um, because it's like, Hey, look, I'm going to go do the groundwork. I'm going to build the relationships with the customer. I'm going to come to you and say, Hey, you know, here's the specs on the job. Um, tell me when you can do it. Cool. You know, is there any wiggle room in the schedule? Um, and then they just show up and do it. So it, it leaves every other headache. Uh, completely out of the transaction for these subs that I work with. I mean, they're basically, again, because I'm working with, with, you know, trusted contractors, like I said, but they're also, you know, um, kind of smaller businesses. You know, they're still, they're still in the growth phase of, of, of building their, you know, hopefully one day will be a legacy. And so um, the more that they can have, right, like good, solid work lined up the better right so it's me going out and uh you know obviously understanding what their expectations are what what kind of jobs are they looking for um and having that conversation you know in the start of the season or the start of that relationship and then f figuring out you know what what jobs fit which contractor because like i said i work with a slew of contractors just uh for the simple fact that that does give me leverage um, and not only being competitive in the pricing, but also in uh, the speed of getting these jobs completed. So the negotiations with the subs really, I mean, they loved it. They're like, hey, man, if I can just like get the specs or the details on a job and then I'll just tell you when I can fit it in and show up and do what you tell yep. me, sign me up. Because, again, these guys are owner operators. They're they love to do the, the day to day. So, um you know, if they can have a little bit of that management as well, uh, they're 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 all for it. And this is going really back to entrepreneurs to the basis of business, right? There's three departments that every business has to have, and it's marketing and sales, operations and finances, 
And really, Nick, what you've done is you've become the marketing and sales division for these small companies, which is great because let's let's look at the small business owner, the technician, if we will, if we go back to the E-Myth Revisited and use their terminology, they're really good at the operations piece. They're probably okay at the finance piece. They understand the money. Not a lot of these small business owners that are technician driven understand marketing and sales. And so what you're essentially doing is you're kind of becoming that department for them, taking it out. And now all of a sudden you're making it easier for them. You're filling a gap that's probably there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and you're able to make everybody have that win-win situation Absolutely. and get paid for it. Absolutely, yeah. And it's, uh, you know, just like you touched on, you know, it's these guys, obviously they're doing their own marketing, they're doing their own sales. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> you know, uh, a lot of these service-owned businesses who are smaller and just kind of, you know, getting their feet wet and uh, owner operators, uh, you know, they might struggle with those areas. So they uh, it's 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 now being being done for them. You know, I handle the marketing side. I handle the relationships with the customers, which are my strong suits. And then, you know, like I said, they don't have to worry about anything else other than showing up on the job and just doing good work. Right. Right. Exactly. <clears throat> now, you mentioned uh, you kind of. Uh, insinuated at one point uh, you had went the business coach route route as well um how, how did that experience as biz, in business coaching help you as you were starting to make this transition as well well like i said john i mean it uh it really w when i started business business coaching it, it was you know i started with a uh another you know uh, consulting business you know uh signed on with them and really got the opportunity to hear just more struggles that these business owners were having, you know, in the service industry, because we were a service based uh, consulting firm as well. And um, so it, it really shined light, just more light upon the struggles that these, you know, people were having in the trades. And then it allowed me to sit back and go, OK, like, um, you know, wh where can I where can I help these people? You know, where can I bridge this gap? So you know, just like I touched on earlier, it really gave insight to more of the struggles that these guys were having um, and the solutions that you can provide to kind of assist with those struggles. So so looking for those problems in the market that you want to be in and finding a way to become the problem solver mm -hmm. really is kind of what it boils down to. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. As folks are maybe looking uh you know, this this podcast is primarily geared at the uh, new entrepreneur or maybe even the, the employee right now that's considering jumping into an entrepreneurial realm. What's kind of the biggest piece of advice that you would give them if they're if they're looking at making that step that might be able to help them as they're getting started? Well, make sure that you're uh, you're obviously sure on what area you're wanting to go into. Make sure you're passionate about it, because when you connect with your passion, obviously, like you know, with coaching, um, you really become unstoppable. There's really, uh, you know, a lot of people I think go into it because there might be a need in the industry or marketplace. Um, maybe they're good at, like I said, I, I always use the term swinging a hammer or whatever that, that industry is. But make sure you're passionate about what you're going into because, you know, obviously you go into business, hopefully creating a better life for yourself, for your potential family. Um, you know, and a lot of people, I think, get into the wrong business uh, starting off because there might be a need or, you know, there might be someone else, a friend of theirs might be doing the same thing and maybe they're making money at it and, and they want to go into the same thing. So I would just say, first and foremost, make sure that, you know, you're connected with that uh, at the heart. You know, it's something you're passionate in. But also, you know, one thing that uh, I kind of helped other I would say business owners when I was business coaching is uh, just kind of a little hack, if you will, is before you start off, jot down, um, you know, some goals, uh, maybe long term goals that you you'd like to accomplish by going into business and um, kind of uh, write down on a sheet of paper, kind of revert. I call I use the word reverse engineer a lot, but reverse engineer where you want your business to be at some point and uh, figure out the people or the, the roles that need to be in place um, to be able to do that and then start kind of filling those gaps. Obviously, when you go into business, 
it's it's most of the time a one man show with a couple employees, mm -hmm. but at least you have kind of a roadmap, if you will, and uh, some some uh, some maybe checks and balances along the way to make sure uh, you fill those gaps and you know just something to hold you accountable when you're when you're in the building phase because when you're growing, I, th I feel like so many people you know there are growing pains and and growing pains come from lack of you know preparation or uh, you know things like that so. Yeah, I would say those two things are probably things that come to my mind. Yeah, and I, I think that's so important. I'm glad you touched on that. Uh, it really comes down to having that operating system for your business. Mm -hmm. And at the start, you know, if you look at, at, at creating kind of the, the hierarchy of the business, you know, we talk about management and org charts and all that stuff. You, your name might be 100% of the names in the org chart at the start, but the goal is to create a business that's going to become bigger than yourself that you can then take and as you grow, take and put people into those spots. Mm -hmm. So when you're a small business and you're just getting started out and it's you and a couple employees, maybe that's where you use uh, a Nick Bittinger Asphalt Management mm -hmm. to outsource some of that stuff uh, for a reasonable cost. Um, but you're able to build up in the other areas as you do that. So having that end in mind is so important and I think it, it helps keep you as a new business owner more on track and more hope and vision for where you're going to actually go in the future. Because if you don't have that, I, I mean, I don't know, guys, I got to tell you, business is stressful. It like is. there's going to be times where you're wondering where your next dollar is coming from. And there's there's going to be times where you want to tear out your hair because, you know, Joe Schmo wasn't happy with the work that you did and, and you're trying to figure out all these little things and your first employee, you know, just doesn't show up one day or comes to work drunk or I, all kinds of crazy stuff. It's going to get hard. And without having something that you're moving towards a vision or a hope for the future, it's just going to eat at you alive. And and I've said this before uh, to some of my coaching clients, stress without hope is death it just kills you it's okay if you get a little stressed sometimes but you got to have that hope and that vision for the future otherwise it's going to eat you alive and that's kind of what nick's talking about here yeah yeah and i'll also you you know this isn't a plug this isn't you know obviously i'm sitting here with john and i love what john's doing and i respect john um this is simply from my uh perspective my life experience um what i you know wish i would have did back when he, we even had my dad's company is as soon as you can uh, afford it guys I mean especially guys that are going in new in business um, hire a coach and mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily have to be John um, but hire a coach be open to that because the quicker you can use someone else's life experiences um, and and challenges and adversities and then you know use their knowledge of how they got through those things I mean, that's just, that's like almost, I use the, the, the analogy like a cheat code in a video game, <laughs> you know, like who doesn't want to get to the end quicker, you know? Yep, so yep. it, it really is guys. It really is so powerful. Coaching is so, so powerful. And, um, you know, I know it's scary bringing someone else into your business or like, especially men out there who are business owners, you got to drop your ego because you know, that's your ego is going to be the thing that really forces you to go at it on your own forever and quite frankly um as i know you know mistakes uh obviously failures challenges all those things <clears throat> turn into success at some point but um i tell you what the power in coaching is just it's beautiful it's so beautiful and it uh it really helps these guys bridge the gaps that that they're facing so well i appreciate you saying that because yeah i agree i i wouldn't have started my business without my coach. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I had another um, company that I was looking at going over to six figure salary, all the good stuff. And then I had this idea mm -hmm. and this, this, Hey, wouldn't it be great? And a passion. Yeah. And, and my coach was the mm -hmm. one who he didn't tell me to do it, but he certainly facilitated that conversation where all of a sudden I came out of it and I went, well, shoot, I got to do it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I jumped into it. And Nick, yep. you can kind of speak to that because uh, Nick has another business as well yep. uh, that focuses primarily, if I'm not wrong, on uh, really coaching up men in their life. Is hey, that correct? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Like I said, I, you know, I kind of got my feet wet, John, in the 
business coaching um, a couple of years ago with with another, which is now a pretty uh, reputable coaching business. But uh, I, what I found was I really had so much more interest in working with the individuals instead mm -hmm. of on the businesses. I love business, but like I said, I'm in business. I'm a relationships person. I love relationships. I love building relationships and, and you know, first and foremost, impacting lives. And uh, what I found was just a, a, a huge passion for that. So I kind of pivoted, you know, um, again, last year too. So I actually... <laughs> started my coaching business and my asphalt business kind of around the same time. <laughs> um, so I, I don't suggest that, <laughs> but um, it's worked well so far, you know, um, just learning to, I don't use uh, balance just because there is no balance, but creating that harmony, if you will, between the two or I like that word. all different you know, all different areas of your life, right? Cause there's families and all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, I, I really found a huge passion for, working with individuals. And I, I also, in my business coaching experience, you know, and, and this will probably speak to you as well, nine times out of 10, it is the individual that you kind of have to dig into before you start. It's kind of like a, um, a hybrid approach, if you will, yep. business coaching, because you really have to focus on what is happening in the, visual, in, in the individual's life, mm -hmm. um, because how you do one thing is how you do all things, right? So, um, I really f found way more interest in working with uh, people and I've, and I've chose just to work with men because I want to create the biggest impact that I can and not that I can't speak to women but obviously I'm a male and you know I feel like we can relate with each other uh, better than you know a male and a female interaction so yeah that's that's kind of where I pivoted to and that's that's my passion project like I used that word earlier I found that that's really what I'm passionate about so and I love that you say like, yes, you could work with women, you you could do the business coaching, but really when you're when you're creating business, and and I see this in Bittinger Asphalt, I see this in Nick Bittinger Coaching, you've got to work in a world where you have undeniable authority, right? Mm -hmm. And Nick has undeniable authority in asphalt management. That's why he was able to go out. And go to so many contacts and go, hey, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And the same with uh, coaching men. Like Nick has already had success coaching himself as a man. Um, and I appreciate that too because I think so often right now, and we don't have to get too far into this. I try not to get too political on this show. Sure. But the reality is like masculinity at its core is such an amazing thing and it's under attack right now it is and so many people don't understand what masculinity actually is and so having somebody who can really help men understand what it means to be strong um confident men of faith is is so important right now because I, I think the world needs real men now more than any other time that we ever have and, and we're going to continue to need real men to lead. And so talk with us a little bit about what that uh, coaching uh, looks like for you and, and what some of the things are that you do now with, with your clients. Yeah, so um, I went through uh, not only a huge uh, spiritual growth in the last, we'll say, year and a half, um, and, and just in all areas of my life, but spiritual mostly, um, and going through that, it, it, it really helped, uh, it, it really, it gave me like this huge breakthrough of, you know, I'm, I'm just wasn't living up to my, my potential. I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, especially with coaching, you, you definitely want to be the example. You want to be the person, the, the, the leader, you know, like John said, the expert. So, um, I, I just realized I wasn't really living up to my highest potential, um, I call it your untapped, you know, uh, untapped potential, um, because it is there, it's in everyone. Um, so I going through that, that whole transformation in the last year and realizing, holy crap, you know, um, I'm not producing the results that I really am capable of producing. Mm -hmm. That was such a, like a, just a defining moment in my life. And I had so many light bulbs go off and just it gave me so much more purpose. It gave me such a strong vision. And now my day to day is just equipped with so many things that are going to serve me 
and that was you know a lot of trial and error and a lot of using what was uh taught to me by other mentors and coaches but so going through that whole transformation said it it, it showed me that okay it is possible for one and it, it also revealed that a lot of people men are are probably in the same position that i was too you know living kind of that average or standard life and there's nothing wrong with that but there are individuals out there who want more and who maybe are in the same position that i was of you know i know that there's more but i don't know how to achieve it i don't know yeah. you know where am i where i'm falling short here so um it really gave me the opportunity and vision like i said to help other men kind of go through that and help them kind of transform their lives as well so yeah my my biggest thing with with coaching these men is just helping them realize you know where they're falling short and then um sending them through a transformational uh just part of their life that is going to give them the results that they they you know are able to get and, and and breach that untapped potential that they're capable of so yeah that is so awesome and you guys can definitely check out more of what Nick has. Uh, I've linked uh, his website for the coaching and the asphalt management below. One of the things I always love to ask every entrepreneur that I have in the tub with me is what is that one book that would really speak to that person who's looking at starting that business that you're like, man, I can't live without this book. Yeah. Um, I was prepared. I knew that question was coming. <laughs> uh, so it, I'm actually going to answer it a little bit differently. And um, I'm going to say there isn't a, one book that I'm going to give you guys uh, that I've read, but I'm going to give you the book that I'm most excited to read. And that's the next one on my nightstand. And it's called The Power of One More by Ed Milet. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm, I've read Ed Milet's Max Out, and that was good. Uh, but this one is uh, max out on steroids. So uh, I really encourage everybody, whether you're a business owner or looking into getting into business or just even if you're just wanting to, uh, you know, like I said, get more results out of your life and uh, tap into that, you know, uh, uh, that potential that you that you have. Uh, the Power of One More by Ed Milet. I, I have been hearing so much about that book mm -hmm. I, I everywhere. Everywhere I, I listen and interact with other business professionals, that book keeps coming up. So mm -hmm. it's going it's going on the Amazon cart today. <laughs> like it's, I'm going to get it. I hope you guys are going to get it as well. The power of one more. Um, any last thoughts that you want to leave with our audience as we kind of get ready to wrap things up here? Um, guys, uh, yeah, just um, that's a good question. I mean – Keep going, keep going. You know, you're gonna go through struggles. You're gonna go through adversity. I will say this, and this is one thing that I've connected with and that I, I talk about in a lot of my conversations. Do not let the decisions that, maybe poor decisions that you've made in your life or the struggles that you're going through right now in business or in life define you as a person. I'm here to tell you, um, and being a man of faith, I truly believe this, that those things are meant to serve you and they're meant mm. to push you through and guys we are all in preparation for something bigger so pushing through the that adversity and those challenges uh the gifts are on the other side of that i will 1000 percent put my life on that statement because i've lived it and uh so whatever it is you're struggling with right now you're not gonna you're not gonna find that those gifts until you push through it and then those those that experience is also going to serve you and help you impact lives down the road that is just going to be completely life-changing so that is so cool i appreciate that i hope you guys really listen to what nick was saying with that because i totally agree mm -hmm. i've seen it over and over in my own life and in so yep. many other people's lives yep. those things that come at you that adversity that you come through i'm not going to be one to say that god's going to cause all the bad things that have happened to you in your life but i sure as hell know that he can make them something amazing mm -hmm. if you let him and if you go after it. So, Nick, thank you so much. I appreciate it. This Absolutely. was good. Thank you. Next week, we're going to have Dr. Kyle Konis in the tub with us from Shift Chiropractic as he is building a wellness center now. Uh, and he's going to talk a little bit about coming to a completely unknown area um, where he didn't know anybody and was able to build a business through that. So, And Kyle's thank, a great guy, so check that yeah, out. I like, I like Kyle. I like Kyle. <laughs> so thank you so much, Nick. Absolutely. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. All right.